I'm Art from Stack, and uh, we're here to show you a couple of tricks you can do to uh, make your, steel, your Stack Zero more compatible with your steel wheels, or wheels with steel in them. So what we've got here is this is a 700 by 23 c uh, road wheel. It is mostly aluminum. If you stuck a magnet pretty much anywhere on this wheel, it would not stick. However, there is one spot on the wheel that is steel underneath, even if it doesn't look like it. So what happens when you're using this on your Stack Zero is uh, as the steel part goes around, eventually it gets near the magnets and the magnets can clamp. Now this isn't great because the whole point of the Stack Zero is zero contact. So there are several fixes you can do. The easiest fix is this one actually had a very quick, very loose quick release. So we can just do that up a lot tighter and I know that that generally solves that for this particular wheel. This wheel doesn't have a lot of steel in it so if you just do the quick release up tighter, now we can go all the way around and the magnets aren't clamping. So you can push pretty hard, especially if, it, if you have a non-PM and there's this big solid chunk of aluminum, you can push really hard in the quick release uh, without damaging anything. Don't stand on it, but you can push pretty hard. However, for other bikes, like my mountain bike at home, that's not enough. The magnets are so strong and there's so much steel on the wheel that things still clamp. So let's go to the other table and I'll show you how you can do a modification to your resistance unit uh, to make it a bit stronger and resist clamping a bit more. So first, you need a five millimeter Allen key and you wanna take, the, uh, take these bolts out that are holding in the resistance unit. And we always have to warn you, these are extremely strong magnets and once you loosen things, they can clamp together. So you just wanna be very careful and follow these steps very precisely and you'll be safe from the magnets clamping. Not only can it be annoying, but it can also be a little bit dangerous if your fingers are between them. So you set the magnets nice and wide like that. And now it's really easy to take the quick release out. You can just do this. This is actually how we build them in reverse. So now I've undone it. And if you move the camera in close, you can actually see one of the Belleville washers hanging out here. So these, these little washers, they're there to reduce friction between the various components. But in, uh, in the case of a magnetic wheel, often you want to increase the friction between the components. So we want to take that Belleville washer out and then we can take this one off. Again, making sure that it is far away from the other magnets so that they don't clamp together. Then we can take the other Belleville washer out and get it out of there. And what we found while we were developing this is you actually want to put a Belleville washer under the quick release. This lets it have a bit of springiness to it so that uh, it doesn't jiggle or vibrate loose. So now, once you got your Belleville washers in their new homes, then you put it back together. You grab your little, your resistance unit bar and do the quick release back up. And now, if you grab your resistance unit, you'll find that the parts do not move very easily anymore. And we actually designed them to move easily, which is why the Belleville washers are there. But in this case, uh, for a magnetic wheel, that's not what we want. So all you have to do is just put it back on your trainer. Whew. These are really hard to move. Uh, and that should, they should resist motion well enough now, including rotation side to side, that they should be compatible with a uh, wheel with a steel bead or a wheel with a steel insert. Possibly even a steel wheel, given how strongly they're resisting motion. So we hope this gets you riding, and uh, happy riding.